I think the story of the Annunciation is perhaps one of the most beautiful stories in all of Scripture. In a sense, the whole gospel, every part of the good news that we proclaim, that God has come in person to save us, it's in this scene. Every time we pray the Hail Mary, we enter into this moment. It's as though we take the place of the angel Gabriel when we speak these words to Mary in this dialogue. And in so doing, we are renewing our relationship with Mary, and through Mary, with Jesus. And Mary has a lot to show us and teach us and share with us. Now there's a quality, a characteristic of Mary that's very prominent in today's Gospel story. And it's a quality that is not much thought of by modern people. In fact, many people would say it's a character trait if you don't want, if you want to make it in life. It's often thought of as weakness. It's often confused with a kind of lack of self-respect and seems to be just always fixated on weakness and failure and sinfulness. And yet, through Christian history, this very same quality is held up to us as one of the most important of the virtues, and it's essential to have any kind of spiritual life. I'm speaking about humility. Now, one of my teachers put it very simply. Humility is truth. So, if we recall one of the first truths God told us about ourselves, we can then distinguish true humility from a false humility. The truth is, we are made in the image and likeness of God. The truth is, when God looked upon human beings when we were created, God found us to be very good. So anything that's contrary to that truth is not humility. So for example, if I say, even in my own mind, that, well, I'm not much good, I'm not going to amount to much, I don't have what it takes. That's not humility, because it's not true. Mary teaches us genuine humility, and that's why it's really important for us to get to know her, to relate to her, to let her instruct us and teach us, and Mary wants to do that for us. Mary, we see in the Gospel today, knows herself very, very well, and she names herself as she is. She says, I am the servant of the Lord. Now later in the same chapter of this Gospel, Mary utters this beautiful poem or song of praise in which she says what it means to her to be a servant of the Lord. Being the servant of the Lord, she says, is that God does great things in me, in my life, that God looks upon her with favor, that people for centuries will call her blessed, and that fills her heart with joy. That's Mary's idea of being a servant. In his recent book called Let Us Dream, Pope Francis says we are living in a time of crisis, a time of trial. He writes, the basic rule of a crisis is you don't come out the same. In trials, he says, we reveal what's in our hearts. And this is true not just of individuals, but of peoples and nations and communities. We are showing in this difficult time what we're made of. He notes that while there are many heroic, generous people who give of themselves as servants to others, there are also others that he describes as having an isolated conscience. People who pull away from the community. People who are only interested in themselves. People that thrive on suspicion and supposition. They become rigid and divisive in their thinking. He says we find them in the church and in society. And so, because of this kind of attitude, people mistrust one another, they become divided, polarized, separated from one another, and can no longer feel compassion or mercy for others. Francis continues to say that while there is no vaccination against the isolated conscience, there is an antidote. He says it's freely available and costs us nothing but our pride. And he names it to lower oneself, just as Jesus the Son of God lowered himself and came to live among us, came down to be close to us. So this is Christ's humility, that the Son of God 
becomes a baby dependent on Joseph and Mary. Our humility is when we learn again how to be dependent on God. When we recognize our need for grace and think about our own experience of having been forgiven, of having received God's mercy. I like to say that Mary is full of grace because she's not full of herself. There is in Mary no trace of ego, no need to brag about how important she is. But Mary at the same time is a person of great vision. We would say that she is prophetic. In Mary's song, she sees clearly how the world has got it wrong and how God will set it right. How God will cast down the pride, proud, and raise up the lowly. He will fill the hungry and send, send away empty those who are self-satisfied. Today, Mary shows us how to take our eyes off ourselves and instead to turn our eyes toward God, to see what God can and will do with us and how God will repair the world through us if only we will say yes. Mary, Pray for us. Pray that the light of the Holy Spirit will show us who we really are, how God looks upon us and delights in us. If there's something in us that is not of God, may we see how this opens our need for grace. Like you, may we find our joy in being saved by God, saved from ourselves, saved from isolation, and free to follow Jesus, to do whatever he tells us. Mary, ask God to give us this grace to serve as you served, to serve as Jesus served. Ask God to do great things with us and through us that our world may come, to, may come through this present crisis better, better individuals, better communities, better nations. Help us to choose that new world that Jesus established among us, that kingdom of truth, of life, of holiness and grace, of justice and love. 